What's going on everybody? Welcome back today. We are doing a deep dive on Arwen. We are going in depth on her kit, her stats, strengths and weaknesses. This is the first of the L's we're going to be doing this month. Since this is the month of the L's, we're going to be doing each of the Rivendell L's at least this month. And I figured let's start with Arwen, the newest of the characters coming to the game and just kind of see where we go from there. So let me know down below in the comment section which character in the Rivendell team you want me to do a review on next. We will be doing Eladin probably pretty quickly once we get him in the game. We'll try to do a quick turnaround on that one just to get that out a little bit sooner. But also, if you do want to check out the infographic that we'll be going on through during this video, make sure you do check out my Discord server as well. There will be a category where we'll be throwing all the infographics from our character reviews into that channel. So if you guys do enjoy this video and find it helpful and informative, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the Discord server. Let's talk about Arwen. So Arwen is the support character, in a way, for the Rivendell team. She is what I would call a jack of all trades, but unfortunately she's also a master of none. And that is going to be shown as we go through her kit and talk about her viability. But let's start by talking about her stats. Her stats are very interesting. For starters, her health, out of 20, out of 47 characters in the game, she ranks at 25th in terms of health. About middle of the pack, a little bit below average, but honestly, pretty solid there. Her damage is 21st, but what's really interesting is when you factor in her damage with her passive upgrade, she gets a 10% boost to her damage, and that takes her up to 12th place. Really solid damage stat there once you upgrade her passive, and that's, that's a tricky thing. In terms of armor, she's just about middle of the pack again in 25th in armor. But then her focus and resistance is where she really shines. She's third out of 47 characters in terms of focus, and she is second out of 47 characters right now with her resistance. So her, her focus stat is very high, but that resistance stat is very nice in that it's going to be very difficult for you to be putting debuffs on her, which is good. It's always nice to have a character that's hard to put resist or put the debuffs on. But now, with this character, it's going to be extremely hard. There's not a lot of characters that are going to be able to put debuffs on her, especially as you gear her up and get her up to the closer to level 60. So overall, not bad in terms of stats. Middle of the pack on most of them. Higher damage once you upgrade that passive and extremely high focus and resistance. And then now we move into her kit and let's talk about each of her abilities one by one here. So let's start by talking about her basic. Guarded Slash, attack the enemy target for 180% damage and grants one stack of defensive to the most wounded squad member. This is actually something I found to be very helpful inside of challenges. In fact, this is probably the best part, uh, best spot for her right now. She's very versatile inside of your challenges, especially when you're going into the in the challenges we're using support characters or you get to use her with the dark with the shadow crystals the one that requires orcs and elves she's actually been very helpful with that because of this defensive ability where you take it put on the most wounded squad member and if you're using an ugluck led isengard team a luck is going to be provoking quite a bit and you use arwen's basic to put another stack of defensive on him so that when he blocks an attack from an enemy well now that triggers the debuff through him, and that triggers his lead with healing for your team. So even then in that challenge, even though she's not with an elf team, that's the kind of team where she's really interesting. That Ugluck led ability there with that defensive and provoking and causing him to put debuffs out, I think that's really, really cool. But even beyond that, this is very helpful for your tank characters. We now know what Eladin's kit is going to be. We have not seen him in game yet, but we imagine Elden will be taking quite a bit of damage. And so when Arwen uses her basic, well, now you get an extra stack of defensive, which means another buff on Elden, which could possibly trigger his second special. Moving on from that, Deadly Earnest is a three turn special, attacks the target enemy for 270% damage and dispels two boons, gains 20% turn meter, and additional 20% per boon on self. Now, right now, it's very difficult to get a lot of boons on Arwen. I can usually get two, maybe three depending on what team I'm using. 
but you only need four boons on her in order to get a 100% turn meter boost on Deadly Earnest. And as far as I can tell, it does not overlap, so you won't get like 120%. So that you get another, you start to work towards another free turn. I believe it caps out at 100%, but we have not been able to get enough boons to really test that yet. Maybe once we get Eldin and Elrond in the game, we can do testing to see if that works. But right now, it's a little difficult for her to get that uh, that full that full set of four boons on her to really get that extra turn meter. But it does do some solid damage here, 270%. And keep in mind with that extra damage boost you get from her passive, that 10% bonus there, you will actually get quite a bit of damage with this. Talking to people who have really geared her up, they've seen this hit for 6k plus, which is a pretty solid amount. That's pretty high damage, especially for someone who's not listed as a damage dealer. Her, spec her second special is called Evening Star. This is a five turn cooldown, so a bit longer cooldown, which is where that extra turn meter on her first special will come into play. Be a little nice here. But this special is pretty solid. Cleanse one Bane from all squad members, grants one second regeneration for one turn to all squad members, and one additional stack to squad members below 50% health, grants immunity for one turn to the most wounded Rivendell squad member. Now, if she is the only Rivendell member on her team which uses Evening Star, she will automatically give herself immunity. This can also help kind of pull into Deadly Earnest, where you're able to use that to get regeneration plus immunity on her which gives you two extra boons for Deadly Earnest. And because this is a one turn ability, you probably may end up using this on that first turn and then use it for her for her, uh, for her her second special to kind of get that extra bonus turn meter. The problem here is that it's a very long cooldown. Five turns, especially with the fact that she's only running 157 speed. She's a little bit, she's fast, but she's not as fast as some other members. It's going to be a long time before you get to use this ability again, and that's kind of the issue. Unless Elrond has something in his kit where he can give her stamina, you're not going to be using this ability a lot. You're probably going to get off once, maybe twice in an arena battle. This will be much more useful in a PvE environment, like challenges, like possibly raids as well. This is where you're going to get a little more use out of this, but in the current PvP setting with arena, you're not getting a lot of use out of Evening Star. You get one nice round of cleanses off your team, and you're probably not going to see this ability hit again. And then finally, we get to Light of Rivendell, her passive. When a squad member drops below 50% health, grant them one stack of Nimble. If they are a Light character, 50% chance to cleanse one Bane from them. This can only trigger once per squad member. The Nimble is pretty nice. In terms of uh, support for tanks, this is another part of it where she's granting defensive on her basic to the most wounded squad member, which is probably going to be a tank on your team. You've got the cleansing here with Evening Star where she's getting regeneration and additional stack to members below 50% health. But now you've also get Nimble to tanks. So your tank's going to be taking damage with Arwen on the team. They're going to be getting regenerations. They're going to be getting Nimbles. They get defensives. They get plenty of buffs here. And again, that's going to synergize really nicely with Elodin, I think. But also... There's this 50% chance to cleanse one Bane. That can be an issue because it's a roll of the dice. That RNG I'm not a real fan of. Maybe there's something in Elrond that can make this go up to 100%, but I highly doubt that. I just don't think that's going to happen here. Maybe maybe we do get a small rework to her in, in that El when Elrond arrives, but the 50% chance is RNG stuff. I'm not a big fan of stuff like this. It's a big problem I've also had. With Sam's passive, where only gets a 75% chance to retaliate rate at max level. I just really don't like that. It, I think this is where something that we may want to go back and bump that up to 100% chance and make this a guaranteed chance to cleanse a Bane from them if they are a light character. And keep in mind, this is only for light characters. So if a shadow character drops below half health, well, you get no, you get no chance to cleanse the Bane anyways. So it's, it's, not, it's not the worst passive but it could be more useful, especially with cleansing the Banes. And only able to trigger once per squad member. So once that tank drops low and she gives boon, she gives them Nimble, well then that's it. You don't get to get another stack of Nimble with uh, with that tank, no matter how much they fall below health, below 50% health again. So not the most impressive passive. Now in terms of where you're going to be using her, challenges are the best place. I've said it before already. The shadow challenge where you're using orcs and elves to get those shadow crystals. I used her with my Isengard team. The amount of sustain that that team had going out was fantastic. And when things got a little dicey in that third wave with the Nazgul, 
Well, that's where Evening Star came into play with Arwen, where she's able to cleanse those negative effects. She's giving regeneration to them. And she's also able to give herself immunity and then able to use Deadly Earnest when some of those Nazgul start provoking or giving themselves might. I use Deadly Earnest within that. And also something I do want to mention with Deadly Earnest is that in all of my time with using it, I have never noticed her get that resisted. I don't think there is a focus check in place for Deadly Earnest and Dispels. And I've done this where I've tested it up two to three gear tiers above her with characters that should have better resistance, and she's having no problem dispelling boons. So I don't think that there's anything here where you have to worry about the focus stat, which then leads to the question of why does she have that bonus focus stat? Like, why is that focus so high? And I don't know, maybe that points to something in the future with Elrond. It's a very interesting choice. There's nothing in her, in her kit that causes her to apply debuffs. So I can't really figure out why her focus is going to be so high as a stat. But that resistance stat, very, very nice. And that's without even having to get bonus resistance within her passive either. So all of that is fantastic stuff. And of course, with her plug and play utility here, great all around character. She's a jack of all trades. And when you're using a character and you're using a team that's going to have tanks on it, she's very helpful for keeping those tanks alive, that nimble able to get them extra stacks of regeneration. So they're gonna get heal 10% of their health back with those regenerations. Very helpful stuff there. And also the ability to cleanse Banes from them if they fall low on health too, giving them the defensive. All around, she's a solid character to have on your team, especially if you're gonna have a tank that's gonna be picked on a lot. She's gonna help kind of keep that tank going a little bit more. But unfortunately we have to get to the cons here. And the biggest issue with her is that while she's a jack of all trades, she does not excel at any one role. She's got decent damage, but you're not really bringing her for her damage. She's got that solid damage stat, but she's got one ability that's really going to deal damage. And it's a three-turn cooldown. Her Deadly Earnest is not going to do anything. Evening Star, not really going to do much there either. The damage stat won't affect that. Again, her focus stat seems to play no, no real benefit to her dispelling. There doesn't seem to be a focus check at all in terms of dispelling. And also... Outside the Rivendell team, it's a lot harder for, for her to find a place where you're going to use her over other plug-and-play characters. Like, for instance, if I had to choose between Lady, Lady Eowyn and Arwen, most of the time I'm going to be choosing Eowyn because Eowyn brings that might to the table. She's able to stack up defenses on herself and counters. She's able to cleanse negative effects, but then also at the same time put Disabled on someone on the enemy team. And then Eowyn can also gain turn meter as her team gets debuffs on them. So Eowyn is just a better Arwen, in my opinion, which uh, which sucks, but that's just how it is. And without that Rivendell team around Arwen, she's really not shining. And that's, that's the big issue. And that is why I'm giving her a tier ranking of B. She doesn't... I, I This is something I went back and forth on. I, I thought about giving her an A, but then I started to realize that Unless you got that, unless you put her in like her best circumstances, which is that full Rivendell team, she's not a character that I'm going to be giving a lot of time to. She's solid and different roles. She's a jack of all trades, but that master of none issue is what's really holding her back. And maybe we see her reach her full potential with this Rivendell team. And that's where Arwen's going to really go off. You get all those buffs with Elodin. You get that quick turn meter boost with Deadly Earnest. That gets her really going. You're going to see a lot more uses out of Evening Star. But too much of her kit is reliant on Rivendell members. And there's the RNG nonsense with her passive that kind of holds things back as well. And the fact she can only give Nimble out once when a squad member drops low 50% health. That's kind of an issue as well. She's good, but... The reliance on a Rivendell team is what's holding her back. And that is why I've got a tier ranking of B on her. I would love to give her an A ranking on her tier, but without without that uh without the or with that full dependence on a Rivendell team, I just can't rank her higher. That is gonna be where we wrap things up here. Let me know what you guys think down below. Have you guys used Arwen? Do you guys think I gave a fair ranking to her? Do you guys have a different opinion on what uh, on what you would rank her at? Also, make sure you let me know which Rivendell elf you want to see me review next. 
we'll be diving into all the different elves this week with this month with month of the elves be doing a dive onto all of them let me know what you guys think down below again if you guys have enjoyed this video make sure that like button subscribe to the channel thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys next time